Oh, we got some spicy ones today. I was thinking about what are some topics to talk about. <clears throat> and I came up with a couple. But before we get in, let's always start with some music. I love my PV bandits. to get it started <clears throat> so the main topic of today's video will be wait for it germanium is a scam so <laughs> this is not a super commonly held theme maybe maybe this is the way it's phrased to some people maybe some people don't even know what it is so let's start off with the basics what is a germanium anything you may have seen uh, alternate versions of some of your favorite products that say you know, like a germanium big buff, or a germanium tumness, a germanium this, a germanium that, a germanium fuzz, and see, you know, pretty significant price adjustments tacked onto those things. And it's like, oh, it's old school, it's got the warmth, it's got the this, it's got the that. And to some degree, and we'll get into this, some of that is true. It is not all, it is not all a lie. But, on the whole, uh, a lot of, a lot of builders and the industry as a whole has decided that um, germanium is an excuse to be able to charge somebody more for very nearly the same thing. Now, it's obvious, obviously, and let's let's explain what what is germanium. So germanium is a material used in transistors. I, I have some uh, old school germanium transistors in this bag. And these are transistors. So there's germanium diodes and there's germanium transistors. It's kind of the two most common things that you'll hear people talking about. And um, almost all of these, nearly all of these are new old stock, meaning these parts were produced in factories that may have long since closed. Uh, you know, they're not actively produced anymore. From what I understand, the manufacturing process is uh, pretty, ha pretty hazardous with all of our current safety regulations. But there's loads and loads of this stuff all around the world and in warehouses still that was made, you know, 50 to 70 years ago, sometimes. Um, and so it still exists, but there is a finite supply from what I understand. I guess there may have been attempts to make modern uh, germanium components. I'm not a super expert and I will and I will preface this as well. And I'd be very transparent. Oh, it's OK, guys. We're still here. We'll stay here. It's going to be OK. Uh, these are not germanium diodes, but this is what a diode looks like. So you've got, let's get our visual aids. Visual aids are great. Show and tell as adults, best game in the world. So this is a diode. Diodes are effectively like a two-way thing. Signal goes in um, and it attenuates the voltage that comes out the other side. Primarily in guitar pedals, this is used as a form of clipping. So your signal is boosted, runs through a diode, gets clipped, there's less of that signal, and the curve of how that signal is reacting to being hit kind of gives things their different tones, right? So these are silicone 4148 diodes. I don't use germanium diodes in anything currently, uh, but they, they do exist and they, they, have a, they have a thing that they do. Um, like I said, this is an AC128 in a cool package. Uh, some of you may have seen ones that look like this. These are kind of your typical looking Russian new old stock or USSR, which is not a thing that exists anymore. Um, new old stock uh, germanium transistor. The, they look like little UFOs or octopuses. Bend little legs out. Boop, 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 boop. Octopus. And some of you know what the difference is. There was a time in my life when I was talking to small builders and I didn't even know the difference between a diode and a transistor. I just was like, I want things with germanium in them. And so typically, well, let's, let's just cover this real quick. Typically, some of the differences uh, between using a component with germanium versus a component with silicone is that it um, tends to be a little softer. There are such things as high gain germanium parts, but uh, usually a little softer, a little warmer is kind of the general, generally accepted characteristics of a using a germanium component. 
But like those things that I showed you, the modern equivalents are significantly less expensive because they're still actively produced and used in electronics all over the world and manufacturing is still running for those. So you can get the same component, like some of the stuff that I was showing you, um, you know, you might be paying, you know, two to five dollars for certain components. It really depends on how you source them and how you do it. What a lot of people will do is you can buy a big lot, so like a crate or a big sheet of say 100 transistors at a time and there's a whole process of sorting. So you'll go through and test for leakage, for gain. Um, so there's something about self-heating. Again, germanium is not a, I am not an expert in all things germanium because of the direction I chose to go with FuzzEmp. I want repeatability. Uh, that being said, some of you are like, wait a minute, Justice, you sell the Machina 2, which has germanium transistors. And you are correct, I do. And I will explain a little bit of the journey of that later. But um, let's, just, let's just pivot for a second. Okay, so you've seen the components, you know they're more expensive. You've probably seen other products, you know that they're charging more. Um, you may have even seen, you know, really high-end boutique fuzzes that are germanium fuzzes that they're charging a lot for. Like hundreds of dollars, maybe even into the close to the thousand dollar price range, 500 to a thousand dollar price range. And, that, and when you're seeing things like that, it's like really authentically reproduced uh, fuzz faces or tone benders that are built to a very specific spec. And this is why. Uh, to, to build perfect tone benders, especially, especially old style ones, at, at scale, from, from what I understand, I'm, again, I'm, I've, the reason I've avoided tone benders is because this is a thing that they need, is you need pairs or uh, three, all three of the um, germanium transistors to be perfectly matched, and, and, or it's like two are matched and the one is slightly offset. So, you know, out of that hundred transistors, you might set to the side more than half of them. There can even be lots I've heard of people doing things like tossing all but, you know, two to 10 of a hundred, right? So it's not just that, you know, you can get an individual one for 50 cents it might be that you're taking into account that out of you know $100 worth of components, you're only able to use 10. So that makes it a $10 component in some people's eyes, right? But it's not just the raw cost, <clears throat> it's that whole process. Labor, any anytime it's involved, <clears throat> does tack on cost. But what does it, does it make that big of a difference if you use an old germanium part versus a modern part? Uh, it doesn't matter. And in some ways, no. It doesn't matter. You can make great sounding fuzzes without germanium components. Fuzzum does it all the time. Uh, creature pedals do not have any germanium components in them whatsoever. I had a question the other day, was the drone gazer part, does drone gazer have anything germanium in it? And I was like, no, it doesn't. Um, in my mind, when I go for gain sounds, I want tightness, consistency, and um, a good low end. And in, in fuzzes and distortions, germanium tends to be a little on the warmer side, a little on the softer, and um, uh, it compresses with different characteristics. But one of the things I learned very quickly about germanium on the, and through the Machina 2 project, so obviously I still build the Machina 2, it was a rocky project. So when I did my original uh, prototype, I think I was using the very first one that I showed I used uh, hand-wired PCBs that I had because I had PCBs made for the two circuits that are in it. If you didn't know, uh, the Machina 2 has a harmonic percolator and my modded version of Fuzz Factory in it. It has both things, right foot switch for the percolator up front, left switch for the Fuzz Factory side. There's definitely been modded and broken. They're not just a one-to-one -one of, of what people typically think of those circuits, but um, I had done the original Machina that was the precursor to the creature that had five knobs in the, the X pattern. That was, uh, well, it was like a hybrid. So it was a mix of germanium and silicone parts uh, to pull off the sound. And I wanted to bring some of that back because I, I thought it might be a nice way for people to have a more pro studio level version of, uh, of the creature pedal. And up, up to this point, all the components that I had sourced, I had really good luck with uh, how they interacted. And even when I did the mods, so in the Machina 2, the big trick is that, well, 
and I'll, I'll, I'll explain this in a bit, but it, you have two toggle switches on the far sides for silicone or germanium. So the it was switching a transistor. It still switches a transistor on the fuzz factory side, the, the gated distortion side. But um, on the right side, originally I was switching transistors with a toggle switch. And the way that I had wired it uh, was with a single pull on on. So there's one thing that's changing. Well, effectively what I was doing was the same uh, trans, think of a transistor pad has three legs. I had the two, I effectively would short the ground between the two different transistors because with the three legs, two are attached, the one leg can switch. And I had never had any problems with this. Even on the prototype, I was using a different germanium transistor than the ones that I use now. And so the both sides had this. Well, I got the boards made and it had this integrated instead of hand done on a switch. And I switched transistors because I only had a few of the ones I had, I sourced some more. A different Russian old stock transistor. And very quickly I realized, hey, this board isn't working how it's supposed to. And some of you who had, were waiting for original Machina 2s, you have made, remember I was like, oh no, I ran into issues, need to get another board made. So I, I did all this troubleshooting and what I ended up figuring out was that the method that I had been using for the transistor switching didn't work because of leakage. So um, without getting too scientific, in a silicone transistor or any transistor, the signal kind of flows um, back to front. So, you know, you think of it as a line like this, right? Like the signal kind of goes in, gets amplified, and then goes straight back out. In old school germanium stuff, because the, the internals have kind of broken down over time, some of that feeds back through. So when there's leakage, it's it's uh, the signal, or I think it's the power leaking in. Again, I only know the term for it and I could hear what it was doing to my pedal, right? So the parts that I replaced them with were way more leaky than the ones that I had been using. So what ended up happening is it would phase out and totally jack up the one side of, of the circuit. And so, I was kind of scrambling. I was like, wait a minute, I'm out of the parts that I was using on the prototype. This isn't working. So what I did as a, a workaround, because up to this point, I thought both those circuits were very forgiving. If I made swaps to different different um, transistors, wasn't that big of a deal. It still would retain the overall sound that I was going through. I play test every one. I was like, this will be fine. But what I ended up discovering was this is a major issue. I don't have enough transistors to source to fix this problem. So I had the board redone. And so now to get the uh, feel of silicone and uh, germanium on the right side, I changed the clipping diodes for the percolator side and it really changes the voicing. It's still relatively subtle, but before it was like, it made it worse when you switch the toggle and I was like, oh no. And that's just one of the things that makes it complicated to work with germanium components is there's the leaky aspect. There's also, as some other companies have, have pointed out and some people have realized, is that uh, germanium transistors in particular will drift based on their temperature. And this was a problem that Jimi Hendrix was dealing with and other players that were using germanium components back in the day is that um, they would go from, say, a, a storage container to like a hot stage. All of a sudden, the the fuzz is sounding super weird. It's not reacting right. And it is because they are sensitive to temperature change. And so it would change kind of the whole feel of, of the pedal. And there's been um, a lot, some companies will have like a bias knob so you can change it. Some people have uh, messed with like temperature controls internally on the pedals. And that's great. You know, I'm glad that people have taken strides to make uh, germanium things more consistent. But in my experience, and I've said this, I've been, I've tried to be pretty transparent about it before, is that the only the only benefit I see to using germanium anything is that I get to charge more, um, you know, for the hassle of the, the sourcing or keeping in stock these parts, like a bag like this can cost, you know, 50 bucks. And I can only use these on certain builds. And some of these could be bunk. Some of these might not even be good components. But where it draws the line, and, and again, 
you know, I'm not trying to out anybody or cause anybody drama or issues with their companies or their customers. It's not my intention at all. Is that there's been certain transistors that are identified as like, these are holy grail transistors, like the ones that have this shape with this look, these are perfect ones. And we can charge, you know, 500 bucks for this fuzz that has 15 total parts. And that's really not a fair assessment of anybody's work because you know that a lot more work goes into it than that. that like I said, there's the sourcing, there's the testing, there's the, you know, you might build one perfectly to according to plan and then you, you turn it on and it just doesn't sound good. Or you built two um, that you tested out and thought they would work good identically next to each other and they don't sound good. And uh, so it's taking all those things into account. I can see, especially in the fuzz world, why people charge more for germanium things. Um, it is what it is. I think we overemphasize sometimes that a particular part is what's responsible for a sound. Now, it is true that overall component choices, right? A op amp versus a transistor versus uh, a MOSFET or a JFET, which are also transistors, but behave differently than traditional, what we would think of traditional transistors. We, that's why we have different names for them, right? Technically, they all are transistors, but they, you know, react differently, right? So, uh, you know, the, there's there's all these choices. The, those, those do make a difference. But a lot of times, you can design a good-sounding fuzz with off-the-shelf, like, modern, easy, and reliable components. For example, the Bong Fire, I have built germanium versions. Uh, there was always a little bit of weirdness, just tr dropping one dead in, um, with the exact same board, with the exact same resistors and caps. So for example, I built one for a really cool customer named Jimmy. He wanted a germanium one and I was like, you know, I've experimented with this before. I think it's actually these ones, exact ones, because these are NPNs. Sometimes it's hard to get NPN uh, germanium transistors because a lot there's a lot more common stock of PMP. Uh, it's a, a set of letters to describe the, um, the way the power runs through it. And uh, it's like positive ground versus negative ground in the in the circuit. But anyway, so I have some NPNs, which are uh, a lot more easy to adapt into the way a DC circuit runs. So uh, I put one of these in, and it didn't work right at first. I one to one it. I tested the transistor. I knew exactly how to plug it in, and all of that. And it was. It was okay, but it wasn't great. And then I realized I need to rebias this because it doesn't have a bias pot or something internally. So sure enough, I rebias it. All of a sudden it comes to life and it sounds fantastic. I was like, perfect. But you know, I might have four, if I pulled four different transistors from that bag and built four different puddles, they might behave differently. And even in Machina's, I have to very carefully test everything and run it through its paces. So. Anyway, just a basic primer on kind of why I don't use a lot of germanium stuff. Uh, I always am tempted to go the route of making mojo fuzzes, but I see other people competing more in that space and doing quite well, and I have no desire to step on anybody's toes. I say that now. I would love to build like uh, authentic Burns buzz arounds. I know that that's a that's one of one I've had built for me. That's really good. But in terms of like a fuzz face circuit, um, I have no desire to to compete with people that want to charge too much. In my opinion, not not saying anything about any friends of mine, but like some of the boutique builders out of England that are, I can't believe a pedal could cost that much. But just me, obviously there's craftsmanship, but I don't know, $2,000 for a vintage fuzz that's not actually vintage. So a vintage style fuzz that's not actually vintage, it seems like a lot to me. And I say that now, my opinion can always change, right? But. At the end of the day, I think when it comes to choices you make in a circuit or things you choose to buy, buy things that sound good. Does this pedal sound good because it had this special part? Maybe. Or it was just a good design and all the rest of the components and the way it was voiced and you got lucky and that pedal just sounds good regardless of what parts it was was in it. Meaning, if whether it was a, a transistor they got for $2 or one they had to have sourced and tested and they're basically paying $30 for it. 